Hello friends, myself Dr. Majran Shinvas, Certified Dermatologist from India, discussing derma related topics in the form of MCQs and this is today's MCQ. A child with sensory neural deafness is brought to the OPD with the following skin findings. So, there are some skin findings in a child who is having sensory neural deafness. What is the most likely diagnosis and if you look at the image, you are able to see some hypopigmentation is present over the skin. And also, if you observe carefully, there are two more changes. In the eyes, you are able to see that there are blue colored eyes. That is, iris is blue in color. And also, you are able to see one more uh, feature here. That is, there is white forelock. Okay. So, by looking at all of these, along with sensory neural deafness, sensory neural deafness, if you have marked the answer as Wardenburg syndrome, excellent, you have marked it right. So, this is I uh, have taken it from actually uh, one of the you know child who is from Uganda who is having this Wardenburg syndrome having these problems of pigmentation and hearing so this child is having Wardenburg syndrome with problems of pigmentation and there was hearing defects also and I am very happy that uh, students have marked the right answer. Almost all of them have marked it right. And also yesterday I asked one more question. What is the mechanism of action of the finasteride? I gave a clue. It is a phalpyridectase inhibitor. And I just asked which type is it. So very good Dr. Reddy. It is type 2. And also very good Dr. Rajita. You have uh, marked it right. Yes, it is type 2 phalpyridectase inhibitor. Excellent. And so, this is our Shekul who is having, you know, you are able to see there is hypopigmentation of the hands as you can see. Apart from the face being affected, you are able to see this. So, this is a, a, another picture where you are able to clearly see the hypopigmentation of the face and also you are able to see this whitish discoloration of the skin which could be partial albinism, okay. Because in Wardenburg syndrome, not just the yeah, uh, white forelock, but also there can be possible depigmentation due to partial albinism, which the, these children can have. And uh, I hope all of you know this forelock. Uh, yeah, this is the white forelock which you are able to see here. So, this hair which is present on the sides, it is called side lock, and that uh, you know, hair which is present on the forehead, it is uh, called as forelock. And I want all of you to answer me one question. In which other dermatological condition do you get to hear this word white forelock? Very, very important MCQ. So, I want answer from all the students. White forelock, it is associated with one more dermatological condition. Please type in the answer in the comment section. I will give you a clue. It starts with the letter P. Okay. So, now let us go back to Wardenburg syndrome. Other features are there is going to be thin nose, wide nasal bridge. Wide nasal bridge. And there is going to be dystopia cantharum. This uh, could be a potential MCQ from ophthalmology also. Why? Because there are some eye features as you can see heterochromia iridis and dystopia cantharum. Heterochromia iridis is simply nothing but the iris of the same person are going to be of different colors. As you can see here it is blue in, and here it is brown in color. It need not be uh, like this uh, every time. It can also be uh, the child as you can see in this picture. The child is having blue iris on both the sides. But apart from this, yes, heterochromia iridis is also a feature of water maximum. Dystopia cantharum as you can see here, there is going to be increased distance between the middle canthi. And sensory neural deafness. Oh my God. Now, we are not only seeing skin and ophthalmology but also ENT is coming into the picture. So, this could be a very very important integrated MCQ. So, all of you should have a, a detailed uh, understanding about this condition. So, there is skin depigmentation as I have told you this could be due to the partial albinism which these children can have. This is inherited autosomal dominantly and yes most common gastrointestinal association is Hirschsprung's disease. So, because we have discussed a lot about albinism, I just want you to answer me with this question, albinism. In albinism, the basic defect lies in which structure? So, is it the problem with the melanocyte or is it the problem with the pro melanin production or is it the problem with the enzyme? Please type your answer in the comment section and I will vanish. Uh, so, you tell me the answer for this question. So, just type 395 followed by the option which are you feel uh, is the correct answer for this question. 
So that's it in this video, friends. I hope all of you enjoyed this Wardenburg syndrome explanation. If in case you have understood, please give this video a thumbs up. And remember, guys, the exam is uh, very much nearby. So one day we will be sitting in the exam hall. And none of our future plans or fears will matter. Then all that matters is how we read and revise till then. So be cool in the examination hall. That is what you should learn and uh, practice from now onwards. And yes, you should stay cool, be calm till the exam time. In the exam also, you should be very, very cool and calm. But yes, during the preparation period, you are going to feel that stress. Why? Because definitely you are going to work hard for many hours. You are going to read and revise. And uh, all this is going to matter. Why? Because this is after all uh, your future, uh, which is uh, for, for which you are working so much hard. Okay. You should always have that strong belief that I can do it. And if you are having any suggestions or any uh, feedback like this, you can feel free to give. And myself, Dr. Madhuri Shinvas, uh, friends, thank you so much for watching this video till this point. Happy learning dermatology. Sarvam Sri Krishna Parvam Sarvejana Sukhina Bhavant. Bye-bye.